If you use stems on stage with Ableton Live, then you need to be warping your stems. It opens so many possibilities and allows you to do so much. Hey, this is Will Doggett, Ableton Live Certified Trainer, and this week in part two of our four-part series, we're gonna talk about how you can warp your stems in Ableton Live, which opens up so many possibilities. So let's get started. <laughs> This week's tutorial is brought to you by Oyen Digital and the brand new Avastor HDX Pro. Now this truly is a professional drive with incredibly fast read and write speeds up to 14 terabytes capacity, a lockbox that the drive fits in to keep it safe that fits easily into any FedEx mailer perfectly so you can ship to and from gigs very easily, as well as this really cool labeling system so you can keep track of your drives very easily across projects. Another one of my favorite things is it's powered using a standard standard IEC cable that you can find in any studio or stage in the world so you know you're always going to have power. Now for more information about any Oyen Digital products, head to oyendigital.com, that's O-Y-E-N digital.com, and use the code WILL10OYEN, that's WILL10OYEN, to get 10% off anything in the Oyen Digital store. Thanks so much to Oyen Digital for their support of From Studio to Stage. So last week we talked about essentially understanding how live treats audio and some of the benefits of warping. If you haven't seen that, click the link in the description to check out week one uh, and to understand again, some of the benefits of warping uh, and how live just essentially views audio. Now this week I wanna talk about warping stems. Uh, it's really, really beneficial to have your stems warped so you can change key or tempo, sync them to a click. And it's also really useful for automation. Now before you drag any stems into Ableton Live, we wanna make sure the auto warp long samples is disabled. We've talked about this on a lot of videos uh, all across the internet, but I'm gonna show you how to do that again if you've never done that before. So the first time you set down at a, a new Ableton Live machine, you wanna make sure that auto warp long samples is disabled. The way to do that is do command comma, that takes us into preferences, and then you wanna to go to the record warp launch tab. And then under the warp fade section is auto warp long samples, and we want to disable that. Now essentially what that means is if you drag your audio in and it's not previously warped into Ableton Live, then that audio is gonna play unchanged. It's gonna play at its original tempo. So that's actually a great way to just quickly get started with building a set. Drag your stems in, press play. As long as you have a click, you're good to go. Now, those stems aren't gonna be warped to the grid. You're not gonna be able to change key or tempo and you're not gonna be able to use Ableton Live's click. That's why we need to warp. So let's talk about uh, how to warp. So with auto warp long samples disabled, the first thing I need to do is figure out what tempo my, my stems or my song is at. Now, hopefully you know what the tempo of your song is. If you don't, then you can use Ableton Live's tap tempo feature. And the way this works, uh, I'm gonna turn my metronome on. I can adjust the volume of my metronome, the bottom right-hand corner of my screen here. So I can turn that up and down. Then I can put my mouse over tap and tap four times. And if I do that after the fourth tap, then it's gonna start playing. So I can play my song, maybe you've got your song uh, on your iPhone, on an iPad somewhere. Uh, you can play that and tap out your tempo just like this. Just tap four times and after the fourth tap, the click's gonna start at whatever tempo that you tapped. Or uh, one of my favorite things is actually to assign a key on my computer keyboard to tap out the tempo. In that case, I do Command K, hit uh, tap and assign it. And in this case, I've already assigned it to C. So in this case, I can press C four times, one, two, three, four, and then my track starts immediately with my click. So you should either know your tempo, that's the reason why I keep my tempo in file name so I know what the tempo of a song is, or again, play that song and use tap tempo to figure that out. Now the reason we do this is uh, knowing the tempo of our song is gonna make this go so much faster and so much easier than trying to warp your, your, your files at any tempo. Don't leave it set to the default of 120, set it to whatever the tempo of your song is, of course, unless your song's at 120. So I know my song's at 95 BPM, so I'm gonna go ahead and enter that in. Now, one other thing that I would highly encourage you to do, especially when you're working with stems, is make sure your stems have a click track rendered with them. So I was working with a group a couple months ago and they gave me some of their original songs and said, okay, let's load these into Ableton Live to build a set. And I said, whoa, whoa, whoa. First, go back into Pro Tools and render those stems out again with a click because this is gonna be so much easier. So in my case, my stems have a click track, a separate click with them uh, that I just rendered out of, in this case, Ableton Live. But whether you're using Logic, Pro Tools, Studio One, whatever, just render those files out as stems, separate files with the click track. 
So I'm gonna go over to the browser. That's how I would suggest that you access your files. If you wanna know how to add the, the files to the browser, uh, then click the link in the description to uh, check out our video, Understanding Live's Browser. Lots of really cool stuff there. So I'm gonna open up this folder. And again, I've got my tempo set already of 95 and this file has a click track with it. You're gonna see how incredibly easy and simple this is. I'm gonna select all my stems uh, and I'm gonna hold shift to select all of them at the same time. So I've got my stems selected. I'm gonna drag them into my set. Before I let go of the trackpad or the mouse, I'm gonna hold command. And what this is gonna do is put each of these stems in their own separate track. So I'm gonna delete this first audio track I have here. All my stems are loaded in. And what I'm gonna do is select the bottom most stem, hold shift, and double click to select the click track. Now with all the tracks selected, and again with the click as the last one, I'm gonna hit warp. Okay, and what you can see is our click is laid out against our grid. We've warped these files, again in our example that we talked about last week of our audio being elastic and being a rubber band. Uh, it's laid out against the timeline, the grid, everything's perfectly in time because we knew the tempo up front. Uh, we've got our push pin at the beginning of the file, which is our warp marker. I'm gonna scroll all the way to the end of the file. And this is just something I do out of habit just to keep things lined up as I add a push pin or a warp marker to the end of my file. So it's pinned in place so it can't change tempo. Now, the next thing I'm gonna do is I need to change my warp mode. When we're dealing with stems and full uh, songs, we need to go from beats to complex. So now with this, I can press play. Okay, I can actually mute my original click that I brought in, play lives click with this file, and then I can even jump around in the file uh, in time and it's gonna stay in sync. So let's press play again. Let's jump later in the song. Let's jump to another part of the song. Okay, and if I wanna get that really precise, I can right click and add a locator. Let's just add a few locators into our song. Three, four, boom, right? So I'm jumping around in time. These files are synced up against Live's Grid. Now, the next step for me, which we'll talk about in a later video, is to format this song with click, tempo, markers, all sorts of things so that I can perform with it on stage. But that's how you can drop in audio files and stems into Ableton Live and warp them. So to see part three and four, where we talk about changing key and tempo, as well as warping audio with tempo changes, it's way easier than you think and way easier than it sounds. Hit subscribe if you're watching this on YouTube. If you're watching on Facebook, make sure to like our page or on Instagram to make sure to follow us so that you see when we post the next two videos. Thanks so much for watching this. We'll see you next week. Take care.